All right, everybody, you're all looking good today. We want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is April 3rd, 3 p.m., 2023, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. This hour is our monthly international call, which we, uh, prior to 2021, we were, this was the only Zoom call that we had every month, the only regular Zoom call we had every month. We've kept it uh, for special topics. And today, my lovely wife, Susan, is going to introduce the title and of today. Susan, go ahead. Well, um, I felt like we did not plan anything specific. And I think that was um, on purpose because we're in a massive spiritual convergence. And I think we're seeing manifestations erupting across the nations with the convergence this week of R Ramadan, Passover, and of course, the Easter timeline. So today, I felt like, you know what, we really need to strengthen one another on the wall. As we're in a we're in a whirlwind of spiritual activity. And um, we've got to have sharp vision, sharp understanding of why we're doing what we're doing, so that not only we can stand, but we can help others uh, get up on the wall and begin to build and um, one of the things that I'm sure you're aware of this call to Isaiah 62 that came out actually during the Esther decree this year, <laughs> there's so much that it is just uh, locked stepping together. And um, I was telling people on the journey last night that when it came out, it, I thought, wow, this is really interesting. We've been contending for Isaiah 62 for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and now this, but um, I, I really asked Lord, what role do you have us to play in this? Because I don't, I, I can't relate to thousands of people coming in, in millions and all that. I, it just does, doesn't relate to me. And um, the Lord really spoke to my spirit and he said, call the watchmen to their posts. And that's what this, uh, Monday watch is all about the call of the watchman today and the spirit of Elijah. How does that work together? And how do we how do we engage with what God is wanting saying to us and move forward from this point on? So um, that's the focus today. And you know, I'd like one of you to open up in prayer. Hey, Doris Volke. How would you like to open us up in prayer? <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. It's good to see you. Yes. I was here last meeting. Yeah, you were. I saw you. <laughs> so you're getting picked on today. Could you open us up in prayer? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Father, for this meeting now. Thank you that you are going to, to bring us on our position where you want us to be. Thank you, Father, that you strengthen our heart um, with obedience, that we do your will and that we are obedient to you and that we give you honor through, you, through our faith. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you now bless us, every one of us, and you speak directly to our hearts. Amen. 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 Um, so, uh, just by way of introduction to the worship song today, I was talking to our Im indigenous messenger leader uh, yesterday, and she was remarking everywhere she goes, she's feeling this call to the watchman. And um, it's almost like when I hear intercession, intercession, it's like, again, I'm not relating to that because we're moving down a trajectory from intercession into the watchman call. And there is a difference if you've, I encourage you to read this book, um, Revenant Rising, um, that we just put out uh, uh, last year, because it goes into this more in depth than what we can do tonight. But um, there are significant differences. And one of the biggest differences is that the watchman is a governmental position before the Lord. Do you want to just explain that, unpack that just a little bit, Sue? Um, yeah. Uh, intercession is primarily between 
God and a person. A watchman is a corporate expression. And whenever God choose, chose to change the course of a nation, guess who appears on the scene? Watchmen. Watchmen were there with David in the uprising of Absalom. Watchmen were called throughout Israel in 2 Kings 11 to rise up and build and be prepared as there was a major shift in the um, government that was about to take place. When Jesus, in the last days of his life, uh, several times in the, old, in the New Testament, what did he, he exhort people to do? Watch and pray. For you know not the hour I return. So um, <clears throat> this call to the watch is a preparation call uh, for a governmental shift that I believe God is preparing. It's going to be a major one, i.e. Jesus' return. And um, I personally feel that we're getting in preparation for the millennial rule of Jesus as well, as we take our positions for as long as we have life on earth. We're being trained uh, right now. And so um, we can talk a little bit more about that after this song. But keep that in mind that this is a call, not of ourselves. We're not a ministry feeding a need or filling a need. And those ministries are important. But this is about a call of God. And we need to handle it uh, between us and God and with one another in such a way, in that way. Oh, I could really yeah. talk. About that. Let's go on to the, some worship song. Just ponder those things in your heart as we listen to this song. So, um, <clears throat> I need to see myself here. There we go. So uh, we want to have a, pressure, uh, a time of prayer and first a little conversation, then a time of prayer really for what's coming up here in the next couple of weeks. We have a team going over to Israel, um, doing a two-day summit, a, a prayer summit called the Spirit of Elijah, and then launching out into both Israel and Jordan. And um, the, I have to tell you that I'm still pinching myself that this is happening, because this is a, a very humbling time. And I want to be, I want to make sure that we're in step with what God is saying. I mean, the signs are around us that everything's beginning to converge on this whole thing. But uh, for us to be invited to Mount Carmel to hold a summit in this hour when there is so much shaking in the nations, I would like prayers that we hit this right, that every foreskin of our hearts um, that is, uh, is, is circumcised um, going into this. And the battle is raging for those going on the trip. And we need prayers for those going on the trip, as well as clear focus in what we say and what we do and how we do it while we're over there. There's two days of summit and we'll be convening uh, um, some prophetic voices from um, mostly America, but also from within the land itself, and um, hearing from one another, and then being launched into a journey that will take us from northern Israel over to Jordan to southern Israel, and then up to Jerusalem. And part of the, part of the journey into Jordan will be the pathway that we are studying in from Sinai to Zion, the pathway through Basra on up to Zion. And so this study has been, the study of from Zion to uh, Sinai to Zion has been very, very informative for us. So um, Fred, do you have any comments that you want to make? Uh, and then we'll go into some basic. Yeah, so we're, you're asking for prayers for the trip. That's very important, but even for people who are not on the trip, it's really important that we understand 
I, again, that we sort of repeat different aspects of the call of the watchman. And I just, um, this, you know, Isaiah 62 verses six and seven, I just put it in the chat because it's just one of the core verses that we, that is, you know, is established us. And the idea is that we're, um, God has placed us, he set us on the wall. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's about, it's about prayer. Um, you who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. It's not just about, you know, historically the physical watchman. He's just saying, um, you know, they, give him no rest day or night till he establishes until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Jerusalem is not going to be a praise in all the earth until Jesus returns. And so, um, so he's, it's a call to focus towards Jerusalem and, uh, you know, petition the Lord for, um, for his return. And it is, and as we're doing that, we're watching, we're looking, we're prophetically seeing, tr discerning the times and the seasons we're, we're, um, determining what it is that, you know, that sons of Issachar anointing times and the seasons and what it is that we should do. And we're, you know, watchmen alert, um, people as to what's going on outside of the walls, what's coming in, what's, what's going out. Um, and it is, a it's, it's part of who watchmen are is that you're activating a prophetic anointing to see into what's happening and to discern what it is that's happening. And this is a fundamental difference, as you were saying, Sue, earlier from um, simple intercession, which intercession is key and it's important, and we're all called to do that. But watchmen have a, have a, a position that involves more than simply intercession. And, um, and it is corporate, as you said, and each person has their place on the wall, each family, each nation. And, um, and the idea is that we're not alone rangers. The, the idea is that we're to work together. We are to um, establish our authority corporately, um, even as we, you know, it's important, it's key that we have our own personal relationship with the Lord. We have our own, uh, our own time, uh, you know, quiet time by ourselves. Jesus went off multiple times during his ministry by himself to, to pray. But that's not the only thing. And, um, and so it's just, it's important that we, that we keep reminding ourselves and each other of what our call is, and particularly at this time, because um, the nations are in an uproar. <laughs> and Israel is in an uproar. And it, is, um, and it is important that we among other things, that we see what's going on from God's perspective. That's why we're studying the end times, and that we um, that we keep our that we come uh, to the wall from a place of peace and from a place of rest, not from a place of anxiety or panic. And um, and uh, and this is absolutely key. This is part of the, as um, I think you were mentioning on our last call, Jenny, that just the importance of the discipline. Of what we're doing, and you you refer to it in terms of um, the discipline of studying, you know, the books from Joel uh, Richardson. But it's 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 the discipline of getting on the wall every day and uh, and seeing what's going on and conferring with other watchmen and going forward. So I just um, I, I just want to emphasize that importance of what we're doing, and each one of us has a role. I don't care what you're. I don't care what your what your earthly titles are. Um, it doesn't really matter, and it doesn't matter to the Lord. It matters to the Lord what you're. He sees what you're doing for Him for eternity, and uh, and this is what's this is the thing that's important. You may be completely hidden in terms of um, in terms of the world, but you're not hidden to the Lord. Right. So, uh, what does this have to do with the spirit of Elijah? <clears throat> well, the spirit of Elijah, um, El Elijah must come first to restore all things. Jesus spoke that. And of course, Malachi 4, 5, and 6 
that Elijah will come before the great and terrible day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. Well, Elijah, the Tishbite, appears on 1 Kings 17 out of nowhere. Get that. And he calls Ahab into order, basically. <laughs> So um, what does that have to do with today? I, I believe that God is restoring all things. And um, he's calling the people who understand covenant to rise up now and to take action and, do, and, and, be, be, and call forth the covenant. We are in a massive war. It's going to get more intense. And we cannot do it alone, standing in our own uh, ministries, our own, you know, prayer rooms. We have got to know who is on the wall and who we can rely, rely on. I'm calling them communities of trust. Not just communities, but communities of trust. And by and large, that is not the millions. That's going to be a remnant that God, God is calling forth. It's like the Navy SEALs of the prayer movements. We're going to know how to watch, how to hold God's covenant in place when it's being tested. And so uh, that is the spirit of Elijah. He was not, he was part of a remnant company of prophets in a time when a brutal reign of kings would come into place that would basically kill all of the line of David until the last seed, Joash, was saved by the, the um, priests, Jehoiada and Jehoshaphat in 2 Kings 11. You've heard me speak about this before, but I'm going to relay it again because that's happening all over the nations. Nations are in uproar. So God's calling forth his divine order. He's calling us, can you believe it? To stand in the ways. And watch to see where the good way is and call it forth. We may, um, we will see victories and we will have one another. But we may not see the complete victory until Jesus has to come and intervene. A a absolutely everywhere I look, it's got, Jesus, you've got to come and intervene. So I'm feeling like, you know what, we are being prepared right now to stand and to be um, I won't go there but I believe we're in preparation for standing with Jesus when he rules and reigns um, anyway watchmen are part of the governmental call of God now and he's going he's getting prepared to set order to change the governments of the earth to, into the kingdoms of God and so this is a um, Thank you for responding. But now, as we, like I said, when this Isaiah 62 call came out, I really got before the Lord and I heard clearly, call the watchmen to their posts. Nick, you're walking through that. I don't think you're there by happenstance or just because God, you want to, or you feel God led you. You're being called there. God, give him the tools in his hands to build now. I think you're going to be asked to do more there. Amen. Amen. So this is not something that I can answer for any one of you. I'm even pondering myself. I Going into stepping onto Mount Carmel for the summit puts me into the fear of the Lord very quickly. Because I don't, I don't think it's, why would, why would God open these doors? Because he's called us. And we have to have confidence in that. False humility doesn't work anymore. We have to know that we are called. And there's no repentance in being called. But there is a call to obedience in it. And every one of you on this line, you have been called for such a time as this. Amen. 
And I would like to pray into that because this calling requires us to take off some of the things that we've we're, that have been very familiar with us, ways of acting, ways of doing things, to have the confidence of God for such a time as this. The hour is getting very serious on earth. And so in it all, I hope I'm not being too serious with you. The joy of the Lord will be our strength and we will have peace that passes all understanding as we walk into this calling of God. But this week as Passover, Ramadan, Easter all converge, I feel like the spirit of Elijah is calling us now to restore all those things that God has put on our hearts. We will see a restoration force in the earth that is powerful. And we'll prepare the way for Jesus' return. That's our mandate, part of our mandate, going to Israel. So that we in the intercessory realms are being called into a higher level. I, again, I spoke with our indigenous watch leader and she said, She's hearing watchmen all over the place. God is calling us into a, a higher level of intercession, higher level of engagement to each other. Watchmen do not work on their own. When you talk to intercessors, they will say, well, if the Lord tells me, I'll, I'll do it. The watchman responsible is, how can I help build It's a different response now and a different framework in which we have to operate. Because you know, when you step out to build as a watchman, God will show you something and he'll speak to you. I'm feeling that all over, almost every day, things are blasting open on this trip. Why? Because we said yes, not because I feel like I can do it. I can't, I cannot do this except God. So um, I feel like this call, Fred, we really need to pray, um, maybe get raw with one another a little bit on how we're feeling, but just pray into the strength of the Lord. Joshua stood at Gilgal and met the Lord, the angel of the Lord. And from there, he established the base camp to take the promised land. We are going to do a worship set where we think the area, at least, of Gilgal is. And it's a powerful strategic place of circumcision, of strategy, of being loosed for war, of restoring covenant. All of these things we are being called to do in this hour. We may not see it on earth, but God hears it in heaven. And believe me, we'll see a day when it all comes into great fruition. So that's my story, Fred, on this. Yes, yeah, Susan, why don't we, we're going to pray. Let's just, let's not wait until the very end to pray. I yeah, think, no. why, don't you, why don't you just open us up in prayer and then we'll have, we'll have people pray into this. Um, you know, you can electronically raise your hand as we do. That's the, probably the best order. Um, and uh, um, we're going to start with, um, Sue, you, you open us up. And then we're going to have Jenny. I'd like you to just uh, pray right after Sue, and then we'll just open it up to everybody else. Well, I basically I see a doorway with you know the lintel with blood, and the Lord said inviting us in, but we have to leave the baggage behind. It's a time of circumcision of old ways of thinking, of old ways of doing things. Father, I thank you that you have brought us forward for such a time as this. Thank you. For the privilege of serving you. In this hour of great 
adversity. So Father, we shed every presumption and come before you bowing on our knees, God. that we cannot do this on our own. I feel like everybody take off your shoes because we're on holy ground here. And we confess that we cannot do this on our own and we place our trust in you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future, that you will guide our steps every place we go. You will guide our hearts into greater truth and revelation. Father, I pray for the strengthening of everyone on this watch and those on this call. For you have put a sword in our hands and a tool in the other. Help us to wield it, the sword accurately and build with the tool. With new strength, revelation and understanding. I call everyone on this call into their posts. Father, they know what it is. You know what they, you have placed in their hearts from the very beginning. You are the God that created each and every one of them. You gave them a gift and you gave them a calling. Sharpen us, God. Sharpen us into that calling. That we will become that relentless watchman. That will not give up day or night. For those who are weary, Father, would you breathe life into the dry bones? Strengthen the sinews and the muscles so that we can rise up and build. And for those who are weary, Father, help us lift them up. And speak your words to them that will bring life and health to their bones. And any baggage, Father, would you cut it off? Anxiety, discouragement, insecurities. We break and bind you and break you off the backs. And loose a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit. Align us for the task ahead. This is an hour of alignments across the nations, God. And bring us into connections with those locally to build and bring forth your fruit. To share and encourage others in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Go ahead, Jenny. Uh, can I just share for a minute? Yeah, go uh, ahead. Oh, just, and yet I don't, I don't even know how to share. I just don't know how to say it. So I'm asking the Lord to help me because so much of what Sue is saying, Sue, Sue, the, the mantle on Sue is very much one of preparing the way and because it's a breakthrough anointing. And if I could just share with the rest of us on the call, um, because I'm seeing everybody's dear faces and I'm wondering where are we all at? What is Lord doing in all our lives? How we're connected to the global watch and the Lord is leading us in this. But in everyone's own life, wherever they live, whatever area of ministry they're in, 
I know that in my life, I've actually for the last year been going through the most challenging time I have ever, ever gone through in ministry. Incredibly challenging. I feel as though I'm walking through the book of Job and um, I, I'm holding on to those words that Job said in the end. He said, I, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. But in the walk that I've been on, it's hard at times to have seen the wood from the trees. And because the Lord has been stripping, stripping, stripping. And I'm wondering if there's going to be anything left, except that somehow on the Global Watch, you asked me to share. But outside of all that, there's this huge stripping. And I feel that what Sue is saying is something that to watch over in your own life as I'm watching over it in mine, because sometimes it takes a while for us to know what the Lord is doing with us. And he, I, I, I feel that the difference between the intercessor and the watchman, that's who is talking about, is a vital thing for us to understand. I've been an intercessor all my life. That's where I've lived. But in this stripping that I'm going through, Lord, please help me share this so people understand what I'm saying. In the stripping that I'm going through, I know that I'm going to emerge out of it as, as a stronger watchman. He, there's a shift going on in my life, and I would suspect it's going on in the rest of your life. In the, the intercessors, they see a problem and they pray about it. The watchman calls it out. The watchman knows that Psalm 89:14, righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. So the, the watchman sees, um, sees righteousness, sees justice, sees what the Lord wants, sees and is a voice and speaks it out. Doesn't stay in the closet praying but speaks it out. And that's why Sue says watchmen must walk together because the watchman will get wiped out. If the watchman, it, because it takes a lot of courage to be a watchman. It takes a lot of courage. I can tell you the words that I am speaking to pastors in the church at the moment that they do not understand me at all. And I, I, you know, to go back to where I was, I don't want to go back to Egypt, but this challenge from the Lord that the watchman, I, I know that I can't walk except that I have a group around me, a remnant. So everything Sue is saying is actually blueprinted into my life. And I'm just sharing it with you to, to wonder where, what the Lord is doing with you too. If you're recognizing that in your life, then you are definitely being prepared as a, as a strong watchman, but the Lord has to separate us. There's a separation that goes on um, that, that he does. And we're separated unto him. We work for him. We don't work for the crowd or the success of ministry or anything like that. We, our obedience is to the Lord. And even if half the pastors of the city can't understand what you're saying, because the watchman's also um, given that prophetic anointing. Um, and so can I just pray into that, um, that Father, whatever you're doing in all our lives, that we do have the right people around us to help us, Lord, the, 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 the road is getting narrower and, narrower and narrower and narrower. But we see the pearl of great price. And so, Father, we just keep, we just keep following you. We just keep following you where you call us to go. And this anointing you're putting on our life as watchmen in these end time days, help us, Father, not to turn back, not to look back, not to even weep for the things that have been so good in the past that we're now leaving behind. 
even a separation from some friends, rather, uh, people we've journeyed with for a long time, whatever the cost is, strengthen us to just keep being obedient and to keep following you and to keep learning what it is to be a watchman on the walls for Israel, for the nations that you're calling us to, our own cities, our own families, Lord, teach us how to be watchmen in your kingdom. We praise you, Father. I know that everybody on this call and watching it on YouTube, they have their own story. And what a glorious story it is, Lord, because it's your story in them. So, Lord, I just pray your blessing on us all in these end time days. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so Jenny, much. That was spoken with such wisdom. And yeah. Yeah. We we're run, we are facing the same thing, yeah. even in a, in a very strong church. It's just yeah. the language. Well, and, the, and as the as the road gets narrower, we do need to find each other on the wall. Those who are called to something similar, and we can't expect that everyone is going to understand it. We're part of being part of part of the the price of the call is being misunderstood or not understood. Um, and uh, and that is, it's part of being a watchman. It's part of being a forerunner. It's part of the, you know, the prophetic anointing oftentimes. And, um, and that doesn't mean that we're on the wrong track. We just, we can't look to, um, we can't look to everybody for affirmation. We have to have wisdom in who we, look to for affirmation. And uh, this is part of the reason why we have these corporate calls. So <clears throat> anyways, thank you so much. Let us go to uh, Michael. Michael, you wanna um, unmute yourself and just pray into this, please. Yeah, just to piggyback on what was previously shared. Uh, it can be a lonely path, but we got to make keep guard our heart that we don't have the attitude I'm the only one. Yeah, because uh, right. there are others, and I'm 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 really blessed to have a, a group. We meet Monday through Friday in our local church, uh, and, and people out of town as well. We have a Zoom call, and uh, I treasure uh, that time. Uh, what I wanted to share is to encourage us from Ephesians six eighteen, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Uh, it, it's such a powerful tool, praying in the spirit, because we, uh, we pray according to the will of God and we build ourselves up as, as well. And uh, a thought with that, the Lord wants to play us as an instrument, but as part of an orchestra. Uh, so, so Lord, I, I pray as uh, we, seek to be obedient to you in the place you've called us. Uh, God, that we can work in concert uh, with you and uh, just be deeper in your spirit, praying all kinds of prayers. Uh, Lord, you want to take us deeper in this realm, Lord God. Uh, and we just yield to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Michael. Let us go to um, Shanta. Go ahead, Shanta. Lord God of Israel, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, Lord God. You are an awesome, awesome God. Father God, we are surrounded by the priest of Baal, but you have raised us up, oh God, with the spirit of Elijah to call out your fire, Father God, your supernatural fire wherever we go. You said wherever you walk, I will, the place, I will give it unto you. And so, Lord, you've called so many people on so many journeys today, oh God. And we ask that you'll be with Fred and Sue on their journey now, Lord. And Father, we call that fire out. We call that fire, Father God, to show the priests of Baal who is God. You are the mighty one of Israel, Lord. And so, Father God, you sent your son, Yeshua, who is our word, 
Your word is our foundation, Father. Help it to be so rooted in us, the word, the word, the word of God. And Lord, we thank you for your Ruach, your spirit. And Lord, you are the counselor. You've sent your counselor and your teacher and your guide. Without him, we cannot survive today, O oh God. And so, Father, we ask the Holy Spirit to be with us every second of the day, to guide us, to lead us, to show us, to speak through us, Almighty oh God, to bring that fire down. And so, Lord God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit of the word of God. And as we walk forth, Lord, to cut everything asunder that comes against us, every hindrance, oh Lord God, with the sword of the spirit of the word of God, and to move forth and to call forth, to call forth your fire to burn every hindrance, oh God, to open that door so that we can walk through in victory and bring victory to the people, oh Lord God. Speak your word over them. Speak healing, speak joy, speak protection, speak boldness, oh God, to speak today. Boldness, that's what we speak, uh, ask for. In Ephesians it says, with boldness stand. We need your boldness with the fire of the Lord. And so we thank you, we praise you, we magnify you as you use us every day. Help us, Lord, to speak your word and not to stop, no matter how difficult, wherever we go, Lord. Yes, the doors are shut. They do not understand because your word is holy, your word is righteous, your word is true, and your word is end time. So we thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you in the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Shanta. We have, we do have a time for two or three more people to pray into this. So please uh, go ahead, Hillary. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we just want to praise you. I think of so many times where your people, and I've been thanking you that you've had me focused on Hezekiah and Sennacherib coming up against Jerusalem and seeing all these throngs of people in Tel Aviv and in the streets of the turmoil in Israel. And Lord, you, you're looking to us to look to you. And when he came and laid himself before you and completely surrendered, Lord, you acted on his and for your own behalf to rescue and save your people. And I thank you as we're thinking of this time of the Passover, as you as the Passover lamb willing. And we, we think of Hebrews where you said that it's for the joy that was set before you that you went to the cross and you despise the shame. And I want to pray for any one of us who've encountered these situations as Journey so beautifully explained. And, and I just sense that the, this spirit of shame wants to come upon us. And yet, Lord, you despise the shame. And I pray tonight that this spirit of shame be broken off, lifted off every single one of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'd be able to be like you, Jesus, fully yielded to your Father with our eyes looking up towards you, because you said when these things happen, look up and to have our gaze fixed upon you, Lord Jesus, looking full into your beautiful face. And then the things of this earth do grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. And Father, you're just teaching me little by little, and I pray for each one of us that the evil one would not be able to confound us but we'd be able to stay in that place of, of the tree of life, of innocence in you, in praising you, in hearing from you, in, in drinking of you, of constantly being in this relationship of receiving and pouring out, and that we'd be able to do it for one another when we've done it with you ourselves. And I thank you, Lord, that we would be able to pour out to all the brethren in Israel you take us to, to encounter your love, your light, your words of encouragement and blessing. 
and to, to be those who will carry the good news. Uh, blessed are the feet of those who stand on the mountain and to proclaim to Zion, your God reigns. Lord, would you equip us? Would you prepare us? Would you do this shift in our hearts that we would walk in your resurrection life, your life from the dead, and that we would know that we would know that you've got hold of us and you're carrying us and you're guiding us and you're leading us. And all you ask of us is complete submission and obedience to your Lordship. I pray for this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Hillary. Um, uh, Margaret, Margaret. We'll, we'll, have you, we'll have you pray for a minute. It's just hilarious because I was just about to call on you. So um, I think that, you know, from, uh, from my heart to God's heart to your, your ears. And, uh, um, and after you are done praying, I'd like to have Allison from Australia pray, and then we'll go back to you, Sue, to wrap it up. Go ahead, Margaret. Yes, Father, I would like to pray for all those going on this trip, Father. And it's not an ordinary trip, Heavenly Father. It is God-ordained, right from heaven above. So, Father, we want to pray for shalom for each and every one. And that everyone will be in the right place in the right time and will say the right things in the right time. And Father, I pray, as uh, Susan has spoken about circumcision of the heart, also circumcision of the tongue, O oh Lord, to watch what we say, whether on the trip or not on the trip, Father, because it is weighty. We are, as, as um, Shirley spoke uh, on the other call, we are creating with what we speak. So Father, help us, give us discernment of the weight of what we speak, Father. Yeah. And Father, we thank you for also those who are praying for this uh, trip, Lord God. We ask you to give them discernment, oh Lord. We may not be knowing what's going on, but by the spirit you will tell us what's going on and how to pray and what to pray. And Father, we thank you again for uh, the leaders, Lord God, of Global Watch, Fred and Stu, Lord God, and bless them mightily, Lord God, with even greater shalom in their heart, Lord God, and discernment, Lord, because your shalom is the one that keeps us under mm -hmm. your hupa, Father. Keep them under your hupa, Father, that they will be completely hidden in you, not only in this uh, journey but all the way father and we thank you father in the mighty name of jesus amen amen thank you margaret okay amen. allison from australia you're on and actually after allison before sue uh, we're going to have shirley uh momberg come on so but go ahead allison if you want to unmute yourself wherever you are heavenly father we acknowledge you as the most perfect most perfect father and we thank you that even though we don't fully understand everything that you're doing our hearts trust in you because you you have taken us all as jenny said we all have our journeys our stories with you and you have been leading and teaching us faithfully lord many for for such a long time and and some even shorter but yet lord you you have us on the same page and so we simply say yes to whatever you want to do in us we say yes lord no matter what may come we are yours and we, we say as a, a community, oh, that term that you said, Sue, I've forgotten it already, but it was great. Um, but Lord, this special community that, that you are creating um, in this part of the family on Global Watch, the Global Watch family, Lord, you are doing something unique and beautiful and we just thank you that you are the one that empowers each one of us you are the one that has us um, in your very palm in the palm of your hands lord and so i pray 
for my family um, that are on this call right now and those that will listen later, that, Lord, that we would have such a strong sense of your greatness, of your faithfulness, and that you are trustworthy, you are truth, and you are a God who never, ever fails. So we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you as we go forward, even when it gets really, really tough. Father, thank you for strengthening those who are being particularly challenged right now. And uh, we, we just praise you, Father, that you are more than enough. You are everything. You have everything in hand. We just need to keep our eyes on you. So we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. You are such a beautiful heavenly Father. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So true. Thank you so much, Alison. Go ahead, Shirley. I'd just like to submit um, this to you. Normally, when I hear something or when I sense something, get an impression, I like to uh, process it and um, just work through it. But I, I felt to, to share it here. So yesterday, I, I heard these two words, and the words were compound interest compound interest and i know that it is um an economic term but i just felt that if we look at that in the spirit and if we look at the fire of elijah the spirit of elijah compound interest is what its future value it is when you add the interest back into your principal balance which, which earns you even more compounding your returns. You see, Matthew 6 talks about laying up treasures, that we should not lay up treasures. But as watchmen, one will put a 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000. Elijah was one man. So as a company, and... Yes, there are those that are going boots on the ground, but the company is experiencing it. The global watch is going through it. And I just feel that it's as one man, yet it's compound interest. And so nothing done in Jesus' name is ever in vain. And every prayer, there is such a weightiness. And as it all comes together, including this new focus of Isaiah 62, it is going to be compound compounding in the spirit and if we look at the harvest field the harvest field is ripe it is white how much more has the lord does he need to show us does he need to tell us he's given us everything we need we have everything we need it is about saying yes standing up the discipline that fred was talking about earlier about just getting up to your post. Let us be obedient. Amen. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, that what you, the words that you heard, compound interest. This has multiple, multiple implications, and I I think that we need to really we need to really contemplate, meditate on this as we go forth and and just pray into it. It has implications for what we're doing individually has implications for what we're doing corporately. It has implications not only for the harvest, but as we invest in um, discipleship, uh, that there's a compound interest in that, um, that as we're uh, pouring into the next generation, which God has called us to do, that there's, uh, that there's a compound interest in that. Uh, there are multiple, multiple uh, implications. And I think that the Lord is uh, trying to say through you and through this that it is very, very important, um, the investment that we're making and the sacrifice that we're making right now. And as, as Jenny was describing, being stripped of everything. In, in fact, there is an investment even through that, 
that is going to bring compound interest such as we we can't even believe to bring 30 fold 50 fold 100 fold uh, um, uh, fruit to our um, to our labors i just keep thinking of john 15 7 which says if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask what you wish and it shall be done for you i mean this is so so powerful and um we so I, anyways i thank you for that i i think that we we we, I think we'll be, I would say that this is something that we'll need to unpack over the next couple of weeks and while we're um, on the trip to Israel. So thank you for sharing that. Susan, um, we're going to go back to you. We're at the end of the hour. You're, you're muted, you're muted, muted, sweetheart. What a powerful hour. Um, before we quit, Rennie, would you, um, could you ex explain what you just posted here? I want everybody to hear this. Yeah, um, uh, I was told that there is a cup uh, called Elijah cup in the Passover Seder, which is left untouched. And the tradition is that to believe that Elijah will come and it, his coming and will herald or usher the, the coming of Messiah. This is a Jewish tradition, but I kind of sensing that is during the time of Passover, which is on the 5th of April, which is starting two days from now, that there is something in the land. And, and, and as you prepare to go for this Elijah summit, this is gonna assure and herald. The, it's another layer and the level of the preparing the way because that's on your heart. So that the preparing the way of the Lord and it's gonna be massive that this is gonna just shake something and penetrate through that part of his coming, assuring and heralding his coming um, without us knowing what it is. And also believe that this is also gonna uh, penetrate something to the traditions of Jewish people, uh, whatever they keep, the traditions which we heard last Israel watch those Kabbalah and those kind of things. So I kind of believe that this is going to break through something very profound as the fire of Elijah, the heralding the level of Elijah's presence into the summit. The summit is very, very significant. So Father God, Abba, we thank you, God. We pray that the summit, everyone who is going to go, God, there are things which is beyond what has been revealed, yet will be revealed further. That because it's too weighty and too significant that it has not been revealed to everyone who is on the summit yet, but it will be revealed in these days to come. That God, you are going to do something very significant with this chosen remnant on the summit, that you're going to use them to really it's not just prepare the way, it's just really penetrate through something which is not broken yet. Penetrate to something which is El the Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, who was so bold, who called out uh, against those gods of Baal, which is being observed by the Israelites to the God of heaven and earth. And the fire of God fell. And we really believe that God at this summit, as this remnant, significant people who is on that significant assignments on Mount Carmel and Jordan and Petra, mm -hmm. that there is something which is significant from the heaven of God. It's going to fall down to demolish those evil, wicked schemes, which is still lying around the Jewish traditions, but also usher and herald the coming of the Messiah, the second coming, the coming of the Messiah as the spirit of Elijah, which carried to the spirit of John the Baptist. So we pray, we seal this in the blood of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Boy, wow. well said, Renny. <laughs> wow, so important. Thank you, Renny. Go ahead, um, Sue. Close I just I, I won't pray because that was that was that was it, Renny. But I do want to invite everybody on this journey. We all have a part of this. Um, as watchmen, as Shamar watchmen, we are to watch over God's covenant. And that means something for every one of us. And for, I, I just pray that all of us leave this call thinking about what God may be calling to you to in terms of contending for his covenant, whether it's your family, church, your community, your nation, whatever it is. I don't want to be specific about that. We will, we may be specific coming down the line as a corporate body, but for right now, this week, be thinking about what is it, God, that you're calling me to as a watchman over God's covenant. Amen. 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 Do you have any announcements before we close? No. Nope. Okay. Let's, um, Jenny, we're going to go back to you and just have you, have you close us off in prayer, if you would.
I'm just reminded on the journey earlier, this vision that I'm receiving again on this call, and that is this huge golden key. It's shimmering. It's just a huge golden key, and it looks like not a modern day key, like an ancient key. But we know that gold represents the glory. And this key is sitting on the top of Mount Carmel. So something the Lord's going to do that is going to release, release this in, 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 in the power of his glory. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the words that you're giving us, the visions you're giving us, the impressions you're giving us as we walk by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, you're writing on your canvas and you're giving us a little bit here and a little bit there, but putting it together, it's making a beautiful picture and it's strengthening us and enabling us. And so we thank you, Father. Lord, we, our hearts are just full of gratitude, Lord. Just absolute gratitude, no matter Lord, what the challenges are, um, we know the day of glory is absolutely coming. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. Everybody unmute yourselves, wave amen. to each other. God bless you in the name amen. of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.